Yo, 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 welcome to another edition of the Geeky Bros Podcast. I'm your boy, Tactics. Yeah, it's just Darcy here. This is Big Geek Umar. How y'all doing today? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. It's Friday. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a hot one. It's a Very hot, hot. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the weekend, you know, just doing something. <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And also, we're live once again. Yeah, number two, number two. Your tactics. How are you doing today, man? I'm good, man. I'm just I'm a little distracted right now. I was just checking the, the live stream just to make sure that we're up and running <laughs> and we're good to go. Absolutely. Producer yeah. shit, man. Bro, Producer bro. shit. You Producer keep us afloat, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in college, man. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do this in college, so I I, I feel like I'm brand spanking new with this. I, I I did, so I got you. I got you. Yeah, I did the whole radio thing. You're now listening to CJLX. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, Umar. What's on the agenda for today? All right. We're going to start off like we always do with the geeky news of the week. Uh, it's been a pretty interesting uh, a bit of a week in terms of geeky news. It all kind of like came in all at once as opposed to like being nicely spread out. But uh, the so first of the week. Uh, a new trailer with Hugh Jackman came out. Uh, it's called uh, Reminiscence. Uh, it's kind of got its own. It's like a an Inception type uh, film. Uh, but I just wanted to know, like, uh, did you guys get a chance to check it out? I literally yeah. just watched it. My yeah, man. same, same. <laughs> <laughs> to be you, fair, you... it came out yesterday, like last night, I think. So, yeah, like, just... yeah, like we, we we pretty much on point right now. Yeah, a hundred percent. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that just, shot. That man has <laughs> aged very well. Absolutely, absolutely. Y- you know, I want to jump in on this one because I-, I feel like it does have an Inception vibe. And then, what was the movie we just watched and reviewed? I'm like, this is how bad I am with names. Like, um, what was the movie we just watched like a couple, like a weeks ago, and we were talking about it. Um, the one where like the person goes back into time and and, and some oh self. predestination, yeah predestination great it's movie, not, yeah. yeah it kind of felt like a cross between them. There was something hinting in the trailer that made me think of I don't mean like everything, just something about coming across yourself and I can and see that. and and there was something because like at the very end of the trailer, the woman that he's chasing after is like when do you go so far to the edge or something like that that like you know the the illusion like something goes away or something like that and then he repeats back the same line he opened with and it for some reason made me feel like he was talking to himself like the person he was telling like you know whatever the thing was like you have have to prepare yourself for for what you're about to the journey you're about to go on is it's like he was telling himself and i was like huh it feels like Inception and predestination slid together, and they're kind of coming out with something. Yeah, I, I, I can I can definitely see what you mean because like the Inception thing was like the first thing on my mind that never really went away. But uh, I can kind of see now what you're talking about about the predestination aspect to it. It is also written by the people who did Westworld, so I wouldn't put it past mm. them to like put that level of like spin on it. Hmm, that, that's actually really good to hear because Westworld is good. I, I enjoyed I love the first season. Second season was like a half and half for me. And third season, I was just like, where are they going with this? I, I, I can agree with that. I've enjoyed it, though. <laughs> I love your response. That Agreed. was good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I, I, I try not to be a hater too much these days. Yeah, HBO for you fucking up. <laughs> yeah. How about you, T? What, uh, what did you think of uh, pre uh, Reminiscence? Uh, yeah, it looks interesting. I've been on kind of a time-traveling kick as of late so recently Ooh. watched um or rewatched um interstellar and uh before that i watched uh what's that movie with uh jared Leto, uh mr nobody i don't know if you guys watched that that was a pretty i don't interesting think i movie. saw that one no pretty pretty interesting movie it's a, it's a kind of a slow burn but i i overall enjoyed it and it had a really cool message uh so yeah, yeah this movie looks pretty interesting and i i got i got similar vibes to inception um, with a mix of predestination, so that kind of has my my interest peaked quite a bit. So yeah, I mean, you know, I like it. I like what I see so far. The trailer isn't too revealing, but it gives me enough to kind of be intrigued. So 
Yeah, I'll, this, I'll check this, it out. This actually leads me to another question. <clears throat> Sorry, this is a little off script. You both, have, I've been noticing, have been saying in the last few weeks or in the last few trailers that we've watched that you kind of, you're not getting enough from the trailer to be interested in the film. Now, like, for example, with Eternals, I'm like, the less I know, the better. I'm actually happy about that, especially with the, with the massive trend that Hollywood's been doing about, like, putting way too much shit in the trailer. So my question to you guys is, and also to the audience, if you guys are, uh, if you want to, like, write a comment down, do you prefer to have the traders show less or more? And we're mm. obviously leaving out the aspect of, like, putting the entire fucking film in the, in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, no, I need, yeah. I need first, second, and third act in every trailer <laughs> all the way through to the end. No. <laughs> yeah, tag us. Why don't you tag this one? Um, it, so it's hard, it, it's hard to say for me, I, I think, I, I, I think if it's a property that I'm fairly familiar with, I, I don't want too much. I don't want, I, I don't want the, the trailer to be too revealing, but I want you to give me enough, like little nuggets that I'd be from like that a fan of a superhero property would be familiar with, you know what I mean? But not not to the point, like, for example, like, if we get, like, when we get a Spider-Man 3 trailer, and, you know, we've heard all these talkings and rumors about, you know, um, uh, not Tom Holland, uh, the... Andrew Garfield. What, it, Andrew Tom Garfield Tom, and, uh, and, Tobey and Tobey Maguire, yeah. I don't want to see them in the trailer. There's been there's been rumors that they're going to make an appearance, and then there's other people saying that it's not happening. It's just a rumor or whatever. I I like a little bit of that speculation and that that mystery behind that. I wanna I actually want to go into the movie and like have them show up and be like, oh shit, that was unexpected. Even though we're kind of anticipating it, I like stuff like that. So don't give me like don't give me everything in the trailer. Like when we when we did the. When we went and saw Batman v Superman, prior to that, we watched the trailer, yeah. <laughs> and they revealed that Doomsday was showing up, which the the movie was trash to begin with, but I would have much rather they saved Doomsday. Maybe I would have appreciated the whole Doomsday reveal. Ha yeah, who are we kidding? I, pro I That movie was still shit. <laughs> but... <laughs> I appreciate but, you trying, man. I appreciate you no, trying. It's not, but, that, it's not that you might have enjoyed the film. It's that you might have had... A little more enjoyment of the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I, yeah, I can get behind that because I, 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 I feel like as soon as I saw him, I was like, wait, is that supposed to be Doomsday? Because that looks nothing like Doomsday, right? Had I been in the moment and like watched the movie, maybe I, I would have been a little bit. It would have been more forgiving for me to see Doomsday, even though they didn't do him justice at all. But yeah, that anyway. That's my example in terms of like, I, I want a little bit in terms of a familiar property. For movies where I have no, it's like a brand new premise, I have no idea, I'm going in blind kind of thing, you don't have to give me the entire movie, but at least give me enough, like, action, a little, a little bit of suspense, something, like, I, I want to see something that kind of gives me a general idea of what the storyline is about, about to captivate me, but don't just show me, like, random shit, you know what I mean? And it's a, it's a very fine line and a hard thing to do, because... You, you don't want to give too much away in the story, like for Predestination. I, I can't remember what the trailer was like for that movie, but I don't you think run I a very... I, I, yeah, I, I don't know if I saw it either, but you run the risk of ruining the element of surprise and like giving away the the major, like all the plots basically in the movie, right? So uh, I understand from a, from a perspective of an editor how hard it is to tell a a good enough storyline that's not too revealing, but also something that's still going to captivate the general population. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Darcy, what about you? So, number one, when you said, like, the Predestination trailer, I was thinking, I'm like, how old is this movie? Is it going to go back far enough where we get the trailers where, like, in a time when... In, in a, a world. Like, 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 <laughs> yeah. When you get that narrator who just, like, actually narrates the trailer, oh, that'd be amazing. So here, here's my number one. A trailer should give you the general idea of the synopsis of the film, or it should, if you know... Like, the world knows what's coming. Like, if it's Endgame, right? We just saw Infinity War. We know either you're not paying attention to Marvel at all 
or you're a hundred percent like no you don't need much you just need flashes of images yeah you know, be honest you didn't even need a trailer to sell that movie you could just be like end game and that would have been enough <laughs> but but um but in general you need to give me a synopsis and the problem for me with the, the teaser that we got with uh the eternals is i don't have a synopsis i don't know anything i literally just have images of people and i'm like look they're people they're different races they're different parts of the world they have different powers come watch this movie that's why i don't i'm not intrigued because i don't know anything other than like great angelina jolie's in it awesome <laughs> like i don't know anything so there's n- there's nothing to sell me on and they didn't have sexy amazing visuals like they were visuals were good but i've seen crazier more exciting visuals so it's like if you're not going to give me a visual spectacle right and you're not going to give me a synopsis then i'm just only going because marvel made it at this point so that that's how, that's how i feel give me the general synopsis now going to the thing attacks to though about like the Andrew Garfield showing up and all that kind of stuff. If you have a big movie that has a lot of hype and a lot of lore, right. Where people can do a lot of guessing. It's one thing if it's like a random movie that no, like, you know, written by some person, no one's going to know anything about them. But when you have a lot of guessing that can happen, let's say you have five amazing moments in the film, right. You know, one's a super geeky, you know, uh, Easter egg that doesn't, doesn't mean anything to the plot and you know, whatever, let's say three of them are really interconnected do not show more than one like let me have enjoy two don't show even hints because the one thing let's say the three of them are really amazing moments and they all interconnect if you only show me one then people are going to guess a whole lot of different angles you show me two i can probably eliminate a lot of information down and actually guess a lot about the film so keep that as much hidden give me one thing and make it the weakest thing Make it the absolute weakest and least plot pro- provoking thing. That'll give me like, oh, oh, we'll do all this, we'll do all our dialogue, and then we'll get in there and be like, I was so wrong. It was so good. So that's how I feel. <laughs> no, I respect that. I do want to ask the last question before we move on. So, in comparison, like based on what you're saying for both of you, reminiscence trailer, is it too little, too much, or just the right amount? I'd say it's just the right amount. I, I, I don't know, I don't know the full extent of the storyline, but I get, I have a general idea of like what they're trying to convey, and that's why mm. I, I relate, or I compare it to predestination and, um, um, inception. yeah, just any other time, yeah, Inception, like any other time traveling movie, right? So yeah, I mean, there's enough there for me to to be intrigued right so yeah i'd say i'd say it's enough for me it looks interesting dars um i think it's probably technically enough but not enough to get my ticket um it's i feel like if this was the only trailer it would i would need to hear that that hype around this film or i would need to be like you know, you're with the lady and you're like, what are we doing tonight? And you're like, I don't know. Well, let's just go to the movies. What's out? Okay. Da, 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 da. All right, let's choose that one. Like, that's, I feel like I'm like, oh, I saw something of like that. I don't see anything that seems better to me or more fun or more, you know, Fast and the Furious like. So I'm going to choose choose this one tonight. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not that it's completely weak. It's just I'm, I'm not truly sold on it yet. I do feel a little bit like it's... I would like a little more plot, but at the same time, with the kind of movie it is, maybe that's enough plot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's not like your obvious movie where you know I, I need a couple more obvious plot points to sell me the whole thing. So, yeah, but look at the movies mystery. that are coming out, man. Like, it's this, yeah. this is considered the bottom of the barrel in comparison to all the other movies that are coming out. So I can I can understand your like lack of enthusiasm for this movie. So. And it's yeah. it also because it feels like Inception. I, I'm not a big fan when you have like this amazing 
movie like inception right and it people have loved it for years my partner she loves that movie and then you get something it feels like if you just like knocked off this movie for me like i'm not even i'm not even interested yeah, <laughs> like, I hear that. so yeah for me i would say this trailer is just right like this is exactly the type of trailer i want to get leave it alone i'm good Wow, Fair. so concise. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Like, th- this trailer basically hit all the right points for me. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to check it out. The only way I'm not going to watch it is if, if the reviews are like, this was shit and this was like a waste of everyone's time. Then I'm not going to bother. But like, as of right now, I am interested to check it out. And also, hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if I have even seen Hugh Jackman in a, like a non-superhero film in a while. Because, oh, no, I saw Greatest Showman. Never mind. He's been he's been hitting like 50-50 when it comes to these like non uh superhero movies. And even with the superhero movies, he's he's not him hitting 50-50, the movies are hitting 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel bad for him in the sense that like he's good, but he can't always sell. But we all love him enough that he should be able to sell. Like he's up there with like The Rock in terms of notoriety, but his movies don't sell like The Rock. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, interestingly enough, if, uh, uh, talking about 50-50, moving on to our next topic, it has recently been released, I think as early as of t- yesterday as well, that Donnie Yen, the most brilliant uh, martial artist and also uh, Asian actor, is going to be in John Wick 4. That's 8. 4. <laughs> 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 you, he, he's like, this is gonna be like a Fast and Furious franchise. I already know it. Hey. <laughs> See, if I, oh god, I, I actually, I may be an unpopular opinion on this, but I kind of wish that John Wick had ended already because I loved the, I loved the first one. I was decently, pretty decently okay with the second one. I was almost as much for the third one. I don't need a fourth one. Like, like the story's told. Your, your tactics, your tactics. Can you just exit him back to the to the backstage? <laughs> I'm done with this conversation already. No, man. Yo, I need I need these movies to keep going. <laughs> I, I, I want it to end because it, it it started off with a bang. It it and it, I will say up until now it has still kept my interest. Like the third one, I remember watching. I remember watching with tactics, and we brought we brought a friend of ours who had not seen the first two movies and is not really into violence and kind of didn't know what, what the movie was about and then kind of was horrified in the first few minutes. That's definitely not the movie for her, yeah. <laughs> Yo, that is like, that is the wrong setup. That's like bringing you to horror film. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, like anything this person says about this film is, is irrelevant because it's the wrong person. <laughs> but anyway, so Donnie Yen is casted in, uh, in uh, John Wick 4. I want to ask my bros, what do you think about this? Yo, I want to hear tactics thoughts on this first because I know he's had some thoughts about some older Donnie Yen stuff. Oh, uh, yo, I am so here for this movie, man. Like, they just progressively got better. I don't know what um, Umar. I don't know what you're smoking or what you're not smoking or what you should be smoking, but yo, <laughs> you're fucking crazy, man. This this franchise is dope, man. I love this franchise. I love Keanu Reeves. I love what he's been giving us. I'm excited for this movie. I'm excited for The Matrix 4, even though we don't need a Matrix 4. You could argue that we don't need a... John- well, we do need a John Wick 4 because, yo, the way that they ended John Wick 3, you can't just end like that and not continue going, right? We need... I, I want to see this whole thing pan out. Donnie Yen, I think, is a great addition to um, to this cast. Uh, I like that they brought in... Um, uh, what's the guy? Mar- uh... I forget his name, but um, he's also a legend as well. Uh, he was he was the villain in the bald headed guy, Asian guy. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mark Desaskis, I, I can never pronounce his, his last name, but he's dope. Liked him in in, the, in John Wick three. I'm sure Donnie Yen is gonna kill it. He kills it in everything that he does. I recently watched um, It Man. Loved those movies. Loved all all of them. And so I know he's going to bring it. And these two are, are powerhouses, man. Uh, Keanu Reeves has really come a long way. And yeah, yeah he's had he's he's had an, uh, an up and down career in terms of movies. And um, I think he's found his groove again ever since Matrix ended, even though it's not 
ending right now. So, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm I'm here for it. I love I love this franchise, and I want to see more. I want to see them continue with this. Now they don't have to extend it and do like the Fast and the Furious shit where they're extending it like. You know, eventually you got to end it. Like, don't do a Fast and the Furious and go to, like, like John Wick 17 or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, you got to, <laughs> you know, I, I do eventually want to see it end before they, you know, before they kind of, like, exhaust the storyline a little bit. But I do want to see what, That's what I, well, That was my problem with, uh, with uh, the third one. I, like, I love the action sequences, don't get me wrong. I they gave us like, so much. They I gave know, us so I much. Love, how do you, how can I you say love, that? I love the action sequences. I love them, and I also love the action. Like I'm loving every actor who's in it. My only problem is that the the, the, the storyline has exhausted it for me. Like you guys were a concise and like like the first movie. I wanted to help him kill those motherfuckers for killing that dog. We passed that point now. Like now, his like fingers been cut it's off. It's not and... about the dog anymore. Man. I know, man. Like, <laughs> like, like we went like, from such it... a simple storyline to now, like it's this grand thing. Like we still don't really know, like the full scope of the hotel and what that whole thing is about. So there's still so much story to tell. So I, like, I I don't get you, man. I really now, don't. How did how did three end again? Like what was like the? I am gonna send your four? ass to the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he uh, he got shot off the uh, the top of the building by Winston, who's in charge of the uh, Continental. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, the thing is uh, that I love about this is that they they're ex- they constantly expand the universe, right? Like the thing that's so intriguing about this is the universe that it's that they they have set up and how what they can do with it. So that's why I, like, I'm in. I'm in for the Halle Berry spinoff that's apparently coming, um, where like what? she'll I have her. her I yeah, man. About, like, I heard about it. Yeah, yeah. Because like, the reason she was brought in and that like she did all her own stunts, she broke a couple ribs in the process. And the plan is mm. to have her to have some some kind of spinoff because that's why she was set up to be such like this bo- badass boss that he had to go see mm. to get help with. And then yeah, the Donnie Yen. I think that I think that they're smart because they realize how powerful this is. That the universe is so strong that I think at some point Keanu Reeves will will stop but he said he'll go until his legs can hold him is how he put it so it's like basically it's it's a it's how far his will and his body will take him uh in this franchise but i think that this franchise can expand into other avenues through other actors and other stories that they can set up in that universe uh i think like common's character could 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 get somewhere in in this as well that was was so good the only thing out of everything that that bothered me in this entire universe so far mm. was Batgirl. <laughs> her is the only character that I was like, the setup for her, for Ruby Rose, was so good in the trailers, oh, and it's so, oh, so under-delivered. Sorry. Okay, now it's, I understand. I was like, Batgirl, yeah. what? No, she wasn't in the film, but like, like the act, woman, actress. Yeah. yeah, oh, Batwoman, sorry. Um, yeah, Ruby Rose, it just, her her fight it just it didn't give me as much and i honestly feel like that is a limitation of um uh for a, a limitation of of her time and ability to fight in that 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 movie um for whatever reasons um yeah i i hear you uh okay so <laughs> i'm i'm alone uh, on the fact that I think that the John Wick movies should um, should end, uh, it, while it's on a high note, I, I just I'm terrified of it turning into a Fast and Furious where it's just like it's like it's a a meme or so, sorry it's a it's a it's a joke in itself. The fact that like, it just keeps on going. So yeah, I just I I am still going to watch this movie. Of course, I'm going to watch it. It's Donnie Yen and Keanu Reeves. Like of course, we're all going to watch this movie. But uh, yeah, I just I, I let this be the last one in my opinion, so that we can end on a good note and just. It's not going to be the last one because apparently they were filming four and five together. Mama, no! <laughs> <laughs> and and you get out of here, man. You get okay. out of here. Well, anyway, we're moving on. Uh, so uh, we um, the next topic is it, it, it's just a small anecdote, but I, I personally find it to be uh, very very interesting. So on. Uh, on set of the of the new Loki series that's going to come out next week, um, next Wednesday I believe uh, it's going to be the first Ooh. episode. 
Uh, so uh, during filming, uh, apparently, Mr. Uh, Tom Hiddleston, who plays Loki, uh, was somewhat of a expert when it came to the MCU and about his own character as well. And if ever or whenever anyone had a question regarding the history of the MCU, including the director, producers, writers, I, I believe Owen Wilson, especially who had not watched any of the movies, uh, was particularly uh, questioning a few things. Mr. Hiddleston would have what they call a Loki lecture, where he would pretty much go into like extensive detail about the characters, uh, the storylines, why things are going a certain way, probably like what kind of references the, the scenes that they were filming uh, are and why they're important. And me personally, I heard this and I was like, that is dope as fuck. Like that just like the fan in me was just happy. I just want to know, am I the only one who cared about this? Or, you know, are you guys uh, as happy as I am about the low-key lectures? Dr. I'm going to start with you, because you're, you're the one who tends to say you don't fucking care. No, I low-key care. I low-key <laughs> care about this. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, I like the fact that he's so invested in the character, and it shows the, the love and passion that he has for this character, and it... It, it shows the amount of work ethic that he has regarding this overall franchise and that he's been a part of. And I like that he's done a lot of extensive research to the point where he can start, you know, schooling people on, on this character, <laughs> which, is, which is awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I, it, it makes me a little bit more excited for the show because prior to that, I was not, you know, it's probably it was probably the, the lowest on my radar in terms of interest. Um Again, I like when villains are the villains basically steal the show as opposed to becoming the show. But you know, with Loki, maybe that'll be a little bit different, and I might actually end up enjoying it in terms of what they give us. But yeah, it's cool, man. I like it. You know, not much else I can say about it. But yeah, Loki. How about you, Darcy? Yeah, I mean. What I was thinking about what Tak said about the villain becoming the, the, the star of the show, and I, I almost kind of feel like Loki, because of everything we've seen over a long period of time, he's he's kind of transitioned into a different place. Like, he, he transitioned out of the villain role into the, like, delinquent brother role. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Anti-hero he always style, was. Yeah. He always was, but it just it's just something about the way he kind of is in the universe now, I don't know. It's it's he's a little different. So I think it, I think it will do well. Um, yeah, I mean, I I love that that he you know he 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 loves his character so much and d- did that. I think it's low key fire. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I had to sneak <laughs> one in there. I had to. Um, but yeah, no, I I think it's really important you know, for an actor to, to get some level of depth in their character and the fact that he cares this much and he did like Cambridge level lectures or whatever to, to, to the staff. It's awesome. He, like, he just like impromptu did a Cambridge lecture on this thing. Like, like with PowerPoint. And the thing is, is like, it's almost kind of very low key of him to do that yeah. because low key would be like, Oh, you don't know about me. Okay, like hold a second. Like, you know, just pull, let me pull this up. Okay, let's let's get into this, right? Like something about it just felt in character. So yeah, I I, I love it. All right. Yeah, like I, I'm all for this. Like this I think was my uh my second favorite series to watch, like the most anticipated. And like I've loved uh like Winter Soldier, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and that was like the lowest the end of my uh list. This is like Actually, now I'm a little worried because now it could like hurt me. But nonetheless, I'm excited to watch this, and I'm 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 all for it. And I love the fact that he's doing Loki lectures. Um, all right, so moving on, uh, we are finally able to talk about something I've been waiting to talk about all all week, which is Superman and Lois, specifically Episode Seven of mm-hmm. Superman and Lois. Mm-hmm. Now. We were waiting on Mr. Tactics, so please, Tactics, for the love of God, tell me you have seen Episode 7. I have indeed seen Episode 7, and I loved it. 
Were you waiting for I have not? Like, were you waiting I, for I'm going to hold my breath until he says it. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, I have not. I'm like, oh, man, why are we here? <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, just so I'm clear, we've I know episode eight dropped this week, but we've all just seen episode seven, right? I've seen eight. Yes, sir. So did you see eight? eight? Cool. No, all right. I need someone to send me that. Okay, cool. got you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so speaking about episode seven, just a, a quick little re- recap. Uh, you know, J- uh, Jordan uh, is having some hearing issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's getting a whisked away by his dad at the end of episode six. Episode seven, we find out that his super hearing is like coming like full Kryptonian style. And at the same time, the, uh, the, I guess, okay, the stranger slash, uh, the guy who's been like messing around with Lois and also trying to kill Superman from like the first episode, like in the iron, in like the suit, he is making plays. And that's about all I'm going to say. Wait, hold on. You know what? Spoiler warning. We're going to talk about this. So, like, anyone who hasn't seen uh, episode seven of Su- Superman uh, and Lois, yo, get the fuck out of here. We won't. T- we can talk about some shit. Well, if you subscribe to Tackus way of ta- watching these shows a week late, I mean, it, like, it's all your fault, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> so yeah, I- I'm also get right into it. The big thing about this episode that had me floored was the fact that John fucking Henry Irons. I know, is right? The guy, like. I didn't even see that coming. When they said that, I was like, holy shit. Pulled out the hammer. I'm like, holy fuck. And then you realize he was wearing an iron suit, like a steel suit, in the first episode. And he was kicking the ass of Superman. I'm like, holy shit. They are, yo, writers, this is not a CW show. I don't, like, they imported this from HBO. That's what I'm saying right now. This is like HBO Max imported onto CW. That's what I'm saying right now. Because this is... This is not like CW. They have been doing shit. Like, yeah, so I, I got to control myself because I'm geeking out right now. <laughs> Darcy, you take, take it from here. All right, all right, all right. You know what? So for, first off, the actually the suit that he's wearing in the first episode is a Luther suit, right? If you actually look at it, it is that the, like the, the kind of greenish like Lex Luthor suit that he would wear. And I think it's so smart that they rare the gate gave us Captain Luther, right? So they 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 threw us so far off. We're like, we're getting a black like like Luther. I mean, cool. All right, but you just go, you just going like make him black like for no reason. Okay, this is pathetic. And then you get all the way to this point, and you realize like Luther created this stuff and he stole the stuff, and he's doing what like like a good you know person would do who would end up becoming their own superhero, right? And you just went under the guise of Captain Luther because it was easy. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't feel like deprogramming this shit. Yeah, right? Like it's like and like that makes sense. And it also hides his own identity, even though he didn't probably actually need to hide his identity crossing Earth. But yeah, then then we yeah, we find out I was like, yo, like the second it happened, I was immediately like, how did I not see right? this the whole right? time? <laughs> like like and and it's also setting up really well because now it's able to build its own universe of superheroes. Uh, and I never would have thought, like, if you said to me, okay, we're going to bring a Superman show in and we're going to have, like, you know, other, you know, heroes in the mix, never would have picked it. Never would have picked him at, out of the gate as one of them, especially when you have two children. <laughs> like, you're, and, and you're like, all right, we're going to get a Super Boy, then the Super Girl's going to show up. No, I would never, never have picked him. And yet it feels so right and so fitting. And it really is nice how, like, you find out in this episode about, you know, his wife and his daughter in the the episode as well. Yeah, like, so, like, like, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I have to I have to be careful because there's more that they talk about in episode eight. So I'm like I'm like holding back right now. <laughs> your your T, how about you, man? <clears throat> yeah, I agree, man. Like this does not feel like a CW show at all. It feels like uh, an HBO show or something like that because the quality, just in terms of the way it's shot, like the quality is so much richer than anything that we've seen on the CW. Which like I'm like, uh, are they even still technically a part of the Arrowverse? Like this show. <laughs> Cause I'm like, it's so it's vastly different in, in terms of quality, the storyline, like the writing, the writing is not cheesy. Oh, it's so beautifully done, like, and I agree. Like, uh, the I was, 
I was willing to be okay with Black Lex Luthor. I was like, all right, cool. Sure, I guess. And then they just flip the script on you and you're like, oh, snap. This show this show just went there. This show is genius. I love how they did that. The misdirect was beautifully done. Um, it makes me excited for like other characters that they might introduce. And remember, I'm not a huge Superman fan. You know what I mean? Like, like he's all right, but... I was I'm team Batman all all day, right? But like the tropes that they're pulling out with like steel and like will we get an eradicator? Will we get a cyborg Superman? Will we get well we you know, we'll probably get Superboy. But um, <laughs> you know, other yeah. other other characters, you know what I mean? Like I'm 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 hyped, man. I like yeah, I'm I, also like I love what is this show. what does this mean about like Tyler Superman? Is he gonna die in the season finale or in like the series finale? Like and like is he going is John Henry Irons gonna like step up while Superman's away being like, holy shit, this guy I hated him so much and like I tried to kill him and like I don't know, like he saved my life and, and saved the world. I gotta I gotta honor him. And it's like, yo, the, like if he's able to like get to put the S on his chest after everything he's been through in this episode. Nah, nah, nah. This, yeah. this, this is, this is how, this is how you're supposed to do it. This is how you're like. We've had to deal with like since Smallville level shit of like them doing stupid ass TV series. We got Lois and uh, Lois and Clark back in the day, which was also stupid as fuck. And like we got the Arrowverse. You guys were happy. I was mildly pleased with at times. Happy at first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest here, and I, and you know it's funny. Lois and Clark. When I was a kid, I loved that mo- that, that that series. I know yeah, it will not like hold up. Yeah. yeah, like I know I have like a few scenes in my head, and you know, because you were a kid, and then yeah. I know I'll be like watching now. I'll be like, ooh, ooh. So I just I won't ever watch it. <laughs> well, like the, like the way that, like this, we're only on eight. Like, we've done eight episodes, seven of which like oh we've all watched, and like seven episodes were like this is better than like the entirety of Arrowverse put together. Like, yeah, but then, yo, but you know what? I, we said the same thing about Arrow season one. We said the same thing about Flash. So that's my biggest You guys right said now. that. <laughs> you guys said that. Yeah. I, 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 I okay, had problems. Well, okay. So okay, I, I, will, I will say two things to that. One, when watching Arrow, it was good, but there were definite things that, like, you know, were cheap. Like, let, me, let me put it that way. Two, I'm still, I still have a fear with this show. Mm-hmm. And the fear is this. CW has a history of season one was great. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so like I'm I'm in, I'm soaking this all up, but I'm still cautious about season two. Like I'm just waiting for them to be like, okay, now let's take what we did in season one and let's just repeat it with a different villain. And be like, <sighs> like you didn't involve no, the story that's anymore. Fair. That's totally fair. I actually, yeah, I will say that uh for me, I'm enjoying the ride. I'm glad that after Jesus, how long? Like, for me, okay, just me personally speaking, it hasn't been since uh, Christopher Reeves' Superman 2 have we gotten a proper Superman story. The animated series, I, I was there for it, but like, it was, it didn't like match up to what, what I remember. And also, like, the comics I found to be better. But here we finally got a series that is doing as well as, like, because like we've gotten the best, as I've said before, we've gotten the best Superman we've gotten since Christopher Reeves, and we got a storyline that is as good as the comics, in my opinion. So all I'm gonna say is Flash better stay far the fuck away from this show. Like, don't no no no. I don't want no collaborations. I don't want no crossovers. Stay the fuck away from this show and just keep it Superman and Lois. That's it. That's it. it. A fucking man. I don't I, want I, any crossovers. I'll, I'll say something about the whole crossover thing. Uh, it's not for it. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> just like don't worry about that. So, and and they talk about this early, and they I won't. This won't spoil nothing for for episode eight. But they do like mention that the multiverse exists, yeah. and the way in which they mention it for me tells me that they're identifying. That like how is this character exist and he's the same from the other one, but when they say it, it's like they're just saying, "Hey, the multiverse exists," and I think what they're trying to say without saying it is that this isn't the same one that you've seen from before. It's a different version of the same two characters who are nearly the same, 
but it's a totally different timeline. And then we have the the, the John Henry character come in. He's from whatever one. So I think that they're, they're they, I think all of the Arrowverse is excluded from this entirely, and it's just sort of like, hey, there's a multiverse. These characters look the same. I also They're not. Feel, I, feel, <laughs> I also felt like that multiverse was like, yeah, someone may come. It'll be a guest appearance, but like Supergirl may show up. God, I hope it's just Supergirl and just leave. No, no, because Supergirl is finishing, right? I haven't even watched this whole season, but this is the last season for Supergirl. So there's, no, there's going to be no crossover there. No, but the like, Flash... I mean, she, just for a guest star, like she may come up for like a, a storyline. I no, I honestly think that like they wouldn't even bring Good. any of those characters Good. in. I because I just leave them all out. I I just think the way that they're they're playing it, it doesn't make any sense. And I think that they're trying to build their own universe. Um, I don't think that Tyler will 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 will, will die. I think that they'll put it close. Um, and I think that they're going to build something unique here. Uh, if they don't CW it and just recycle the same, you know, seasons over and over again, try to milk it, you know, it's like, oh, it worked once, so let's just pump money through it, you know. Yeah. So I, I gotta say, like, well, another thing about this 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 episode, like, for the first time, I actually liked Jordan. I found uh, like the fact that he's being overwhelmed with sound and him like having to use like headphones, just like and, and like and just like mm. just trying to listen to like the tick of a of a clock. And that's causing him so much pain. And the fact that, like, you find out that his father kind of what, like, uh, Clark went through like weeks of trying to like get better at this. I, I, I like how they show that kind of like just like like details, like one by one. We're going through the powers, but we're going through like someone who ha like is learning them. So you get to the reality of like what Superman can actually do and what he's had to get through to overcome. I have a I have a follow up question because something just popped my head and I'm gonna ask this question again next week because of the content in next in this week's episode but I obviously can't include that now. Hmm. So remember back uh, like episode one or two we were like oh this show is great I think it was episode two and then the news came out about the one writer leaving the show yeah. and and and, the, and there wasn't enough inclusion. Now I I won't say that there's obviously a large inclusion of multi multi racial individuals in the in the show, but from the yeah, specific yeah yeah but specifically on the lowest character how they were saying like oh she was very underutilized how do you feel at this point of her utilization in the show i would say she's kind of a background character with like but like she's got her own thing going uh and also like the whole stuff with john henry irons kind of like upped upped it a little bit more but really she's like i would say She's just below, like, the kids. Because, like, really what the show is about is Superman and the kids so mm -hmm. far. And I can definitely see what the uh, what the writer who left was talking about. Like, it, like she's there. She's not, like, wasted. Uh, but at the same time, she's not anything of equal value as Tyler. And, like, to be fair, Tyler's stealing the show. Like, my man, he's Superman. For me, with with uh, Lois, she's just kind of there as a mom, and and like she she does have her reporting there, but it's like it's more like just kind of there to give, like b either push the story along a little bit or like have that like uh, Lana and her uh, husband have like some drama in their marriage. So like the, like I kind of see it like she's just there. Mm-hmm. Doctor, what do you feel? <clears throat> um. I'm going to be honest. I was kind of distracted looking up photos of Lois. <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really, do, do, what's the question? Do you, feel like, do you feel like she's being <clears throat> utilized well in the show? Or do you feel like she's just playing like a background character? <sighs> Let's be honest. She's always going to, to some degree, play a background character because it's Superman. We're talking about mm. Superman. Even yeah. in the Justice League, like everyone's a background character in relation to Superman, so like, except, for except for Batman, <laughs> except for Batman, yeah, yeah, which is and funny Wonder because Woman. a lot in a lot of photos you always see Batman trying to take a little bit of like the front <laughs> spot, like he'll be like edging his way in, like. <laughs> yes, oh Superman. man! Yeah, it's just like yeah, no, let me, like let me just let me just get a shoulder, you know? Okay, let me just like, get a shoulder. In. We're Justice League. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our, we're Superman. <laughs> Justice League. <laughs> There's no yeah. I 
Wait, no, there is nine. <laughs> <laughs> we are the world's finest team. We yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, like I so yeah, so it's going to be hard because she's always I feel to a certain extent going to be overshadowed by by Superman, right? And especially considering that he's essentially playing two different characters, right? So it's like yeah. two people that are overshadowing her, right? So I think two you know the, yeah, you know like there I think there's still kind of going to be it's still going to take a while before she gets her footing and she's kind of like somewhat in the spotlight but i think sadly she's still gonna be outshined by superman and that to a certain extent that's okay uh because for what she's doing she's thriving in terms of like the reportive nature of her career and stuff and there are some correlations and cross sections between what she's investigating and and what superman's doing with his adventures and and whatnot so everything kind of comes together in this cohesive storyline right so which is which is great so i think i think it's going to be okay i don't think she the in terms of the character there's anything to really worry about i think she's still going to get enough screen time and get an opportunity to have her own storylines but let's be real it's a superman show but see, the thing is, is Superman and Lois. It's Superman yeah, her, and Lois. Like, her name yeah, is Lois. Yeah, but yeah, right. I understand. I understand that. I understand that. But again, it's it's it, it it's Superman and Lois, but it's really Superman. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it it. It's like they went Superman and Lois, and they go, "How many letters are in Superman? How many letters are in Lois?" And that's the percentage you're gonna get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> like Lois I, is a short word. <laughs> I just feel like they could do more with her. Like, like show that she is like this, like top-notch detective, like not detective, but like an investigative journalist who like actually is not getting herself in trouble that Clark needs to save her every five minutes, but also like she's actually indispensable to him in terms of like figuring sh stuff out and but i i, I kind of wish like they, like because if you're like it's not about just having screen time it's like they have to have an equal or at least a significantly useful aspect like right now jonathan is outpacing her in terms of like story and like mm. he's technically speaking the guy who like doesn't have powers and like like you know he's the one who like broke his arm. You know he's the one that his brother is like relying on. You know he's the one that like, well, I think he's gonna steal the girl, but like you know, I think I may be the only one. But like nonetheless, like Jonathan has more of a story arc ahead of him, and also presently, she's just right there. Like <clears throat> she's following Morgan Edge, and it's like, oh, I need to figure out what Morgan Edge is doing, and everyone's like, okay, Lois, and that's not what I'm. I'm not liking that. Like Lana oh. actually is getting a little bit more of like a. Like, well, I do like the fact that Lana and her are kind of, like, going, like, undercover Morgan Edge. And so that's kind of <clears> cool. <throat> but, like, they, they really need to get get that storyline rushing out. I, I think they will. But I think the reason for that is because if you're familiar, if you are a person that's familiar with the comics, you know that Jonathan was originally supposed to be the one with powers. And the fact that Jordan is the one with powers makes him intriguing <clears throat> with that aspect alone. And then... Now there's this like there's this element of mystique where it's like, well, is Jonathan like what's going to happen with Jonathan? Is he going to get powers as well? Is there going to be some kind of a, a face off between Jordan and Jonathan at some point? Like so there's a lot of potential there to build his character and there's a lot of like intrigue there. Right. I think Lois is still kind of finding her groove in terms of like what her purpose is in the overall storyline. And they're just they're giving her like, you know, investigative reportive shit to 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 do which because it's her job and that's what she's that's what she's known for right and i think it's hard to really pull together like captivating storylines that are also that also kind of coalesce with what's going on with superman right and so see, so that, that that's actually exactly my point like because jonathan and jordan have all this potential it makes it that much more glaring that Lois doesn't. And like that's kind of what the uh the writer was saying. Like she was trying to bring more female storyline, more female potential uh, like storyline potential uh, as you put it, to to Lois and I, I'm assuming Lana as well. And also like aside from Sarah, Lois and Lana, like L Lana, I guess you could say like she's not like her husband is attached to her story, but Lois 
and Sarah are attached to uh, like men's story, and they're kind of like side characters to that. And Lois is supposed to be like an equal at the very least with Superman. That's what so I'm saying. So how like, how would you guys write it then? How would you guys write her character arc? So I I have some thoughts here. And first thing I want to say is not spoiling, but uh, I like her performance in episode eight. So we'll, let's look forward to that next week because I, I was impressed with, prof- impressed with that. My thought is this, and I don't think you can get this done this season because of where things have already gone and where the story is already kind of going. Uh, unless we have like 20 episodes in the season, then maybe we can get this done. But um, what I would like to see, say, going into season two for her to have more of a story is you need a villain who is smart at keeping Superman busy, making her investigation almost low-level Batman-like, just the investigative Mm. part of it, um, where if she wasn't doing that job, the villain would have won because Superman was so busy solving the bigger problems that you were creating like it's like uh i'm trying to remember what what heist film or something i watched recently but there in some movie or show i was watching um they oh i I know it was anime it was the it's 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 the uh jujutsu kaisen that i I was watching there's like a scene there's a scene where basically like all the villains attack something right and everyone's fighting off these these super powerful villains and the one powerful villain nobody knows is there is there to steal something of of high value right it's the, that kind of premise where you're like you need superman fighting the big bad that nobody else can fight while the villain is doing the thing that superman doesn't know that they're doing and it's doing it over an entire season so it's a big thing that they're building to and nobody can figure out what it, what it is including the audience and the only person who's got who's always one step ahead of even the audience is Lois at trying to uncover and seeing the thing that even maybe <clears throat> Superman can't see. Maybe Superman is too distracted. Maybe there's like whatever it is, he can't see what she can see. And it's not because like you don't need powers to see it. You need a mind to see it. And his mind is too distracted. Yeah. And I think we could get a really strong character out of her with strong purpose because we're not you know uh if every time she investigates something she needs to be saved or it's almost on the edge of being saved then it's always going to be a damsel in distress at the end of the day and it will dilute her quality yeah like uh, that's uh, essentially what i was going for myself like we're like essentially superman is in the weeds He, he can't see the big picture and lois is putting together the big picture and in the and also at the same time she's the one who is kind of helping them to realize that he's getting played because he is a little bit more naive she's a little bit more worldly wise uh and also is like savvy enough to like think like a villain a little bit but like not be taken down to that level but she's like hey like i know people do shit like this and so in a way she's kind of saving him like for example i i would i found it to be cute the fact that uh, like John Henry Irons nearly killed Superman, uh, but like because he was like prepped for him and like and knew what to do, and it literally was his sons to save him. I would have preferred that actually was Lois, uh, but you know, fine. Like you're gonna give Jonathan something to do with his hearing. I, I understand that, but like it's once again proof that they're not really focusing on the female representation nor being progressive about it. Like I would say that this is very it's better than stereotypical comic book depictions and like in like animated superhero films uh, and TV series. But the thing is like, those are inherently patriotical. So of course we're used to that and it takes a little bit extra. So I I have been hearing that, uh, that uh, episode eight has kind of a little bit more of what I'm wanting. Uh, I'll, I'll see what it is uh, next week and we'll discuss it. But like, I just feel like like they could have done more with Lois, and now I actually am seeing what the writer is saying. I don't <laughs> think it's as bad as she was saying, but I would say this is as best as what was always been done. We wanted more. Or I would say I, I, I want, wanted more. I almost want to say one thing about that. Like, she might not, like, they might not be doing the greatest job of giving the right female representation at, at times, but I think it's even a step. Uh, slightly different than that which is it's not 
they're not writing the character well enough. Like, take the, if you took the gender out of it, it's a character they're not utilizing as well to be the second bill on the card. Yeah. Right? Yeah, um, if she was just a, you know, random other character, then yeah, cool. Like, then she's, she's got a fine showing, but she's a second bill on the, on the card. And so the more that can be done there. And one thing I would love to see if they were to do the thing that we're saying where it's he's in the weeds and she sees the big picture. I would love to see her play her father because mm. the interaction would be like she uses him to achieve something. Yeah. And then his his response to that would be like, well played. Like, you yeah. know, he'd be, he would be <laughs> mad, but he'd be like, you're finally getting it. He'd be mad that he got played, but he would respect being played by her and be proud of it as much as it hurts his pride. And I would love that moment just just for that, like, okay. <laughs> and just let it like move on, you know? I'm like, yep, that was good. Let me ask you both something. Okay, so like for me personally, I would say that this like even though he hasn't even put on the suit yet, uh John Henry Irons or let's just call him Steel. Like this depiction of Steel is my favorite. <laughs> I mean, if you're comparing it to live action, <laughs> I was it's not I hard. Was, it's I was not looking, hard. What was that movie we watched it, with Terry Crews, uh, where he was like John Henry or something like that? Like, oh my God, that's I forgot. I, I, why did you bring that up? I try to forget that. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I literally was like, all there is is Shaq and this, and then you had to remind <laughs> me of the Terry Crews film. <laughs> uh, they, they they also had um, in the animated series. They also had uh, like Steel in that. So yeah. I wanted to ask. Would you say that this is sig- like? Would you say this is like Christopher Reeves level good depiction of Steel, or would you have wanted something a little bit differently or a little but bit Steel better? in a Christopher Reeves movie? No, no. But what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> for me, when I saw Christopher Reeves as Superman, that was the definitive Superman. Oh, so is he the definitive Steel? Yes. Got you. Um, I feel like it's early to use the word definitive. But just because I'm like, we haven't seen him actually become Steel, right? Like, you know, we know he's coming, but we haven't seen it. Um, so far, it's the best one that, that we've seen. Shaq's character, yeah, that's cute, right? Um, the, 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 the Terry Crews one, that was just stupid. The oh, whole offensive. directing of that movie, like, they held, they held scenes you're like, like, everyone was watching that, like, you, you you think you're like in a film editing class and you're like, yo, you, you, you're supposed to cut this like at least 20 seconds ago. Why are we still watching this right now? Like, like is Terry going to be like, oh, just get up and stop acting in the middle of this cut? Um, but like, and if I compare it to the animated, the as much as the animated stuff was cool, like it was very light from all, all that I remember. And so like, it was just like one of the guys in the justice league. So it was like more like a fun Easter egg and a, and a cool moment. This actually has life to it. So it's winning rare the gate because it has depth that I've not seen. And it, it's just not definitive yet because they could put on the suit and we hate it. T. Yeah, I agree with Darcy. It's hard to really say, or because we don't have a, large sample size to compare it to right other than Shaq and the cartoon right um i don't know much about steel as a character outside of the Shaq <laughs> movie <laughs> and the cartoon so yeah i agree with darcy it's it's winning right out of the gate like for me like i i thought i love the easter egg i, I thought it was a really good misdirect followed by a great reveal which was awesome so yeah uh it, it's a win for me um just to go back on that, uh, the the point about Lois, I agree with both of you guys in regards to the representation, and I I what I appreciate, and I do hope that they they give her more time to shine within the show because I've always believed that Lois was a better investigative reporter than Clark Kent was, despite the fact that he has these amazing powers, right? So I would love to see that played up a little bit more and, and her showcase that her, her talents and her abilities that go that extend far beyond the the, the, the super super powered being of, of Superman. But what I will say and what I do appreciate is the fact that she they're not playing up the damsel in distress role with her. Like we've seen that trip that, that trope exhausted 
And I'm glad that, like, you know, when she goes out and she tells Clark, yeah, I'm going to investigate such and such. He's just like, okay, be careful. It's not like, oh, you should be, you should worry. Like, he's not trying to be the macho guy and, like, try to protect her. He's just like, nah, like, my woman, she she holds her own. She knows what she's doing. She'll call me if she needs, needs me, but she's got it. I know she's good like that. And I love that. Go on. I like yeah. I, I like I like the fact that like the sons also have like equal level of like calling of their dad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh it's yeah. Just, like, yeah. All three of them basically have to call their dad. It's not just the mom. Yeah. 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 So I I really appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Some good point right there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. uh, I guess our love for Superman and Lois continues, and I'm I'm looking forward to all of us uh, checking out um, episode eight uh, for next week. Uh, what. A little bit uh, of a notice for everyone. Next week will be our season one finale, which will just mean that like it's a full season of us actually doing the Geeky Bros podcast. So uh, you know we're we uh, nice little celebration. So hopefully we'll have something to talk about with episode eight. Nice. Sure. Yeah. A new All set right. of fifty two is coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right. So. I- so is that how we're ending this? Is are we done? Like, are we are we wrapped? I I, I feel we're wrapped. How about you guys? Wrap like right, a magnum. I guess, Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I All right. And on that and on that note, I'm your boy Tactics. Yo, it's just Darcy here. And this is Big Geek Kumar. Live long and prosper, y'all, and like and subscribe. <laughs>